What's up, Shredders? My name is Logan, aka Spiderhands, and welcome to an SP Reviews, where today we have ourselves a track from an act named Later Than Eight, titled Flames. And if we switch over to here, we have ourselves a track on the screen on YouTube, and we're going to listen through it from start to finish. We're going to hear what we think. I listened to these guys before, so it'll be good to hear more of it, but let's go. Flames. Interesting panning of those instruments. A bit of turntablism as well. Great pitching of the vocals there. I mean, like, I'm not going to try and pause too much in this review, but what I will say is I think everything at the moment texturally sounds really nicely together i just don't know if i'm getting all the words through clearly but i i appreciate the way things sound how they're niched and structured in the frequency spectrum and stereo field and stuff like that Okay, so there's stuff that I appreciate about this track. Um, I think the majority of it is going to be positive. Uh, I'm going to have a look through the lyrics. I think they're in the description, and then we're going to talk about this track more in the conclusion. So we've got the lyrics here. I found them here. Thank you to Later Than Eight for putting these forward. I do appreciate that. Um, Flames is an anthem of rising above all things that weigh. Trapped inside my mind, a thousand thoughts collide, running out my voice. I try to find the light. Shadows in my past, the night they hold me in my past. 
Okay, so I get it. I understand how it relates to the first sentence at the start of the description there. Um, I'll tear down the walls. I'll escape from this cage. I won't be defined by the scars that remain. I'll find my way out. I'll rise. I'll rise from the flames. The echoes in my head that keep me awake remind me of all the choices I didn't make, but I won't be afraid. Okay, I understand it. So we're being tormented by like the past that we've had and it's kind of weighing us down as well as other things and we're looking to move beyond that. I'll break the silence. I'll shatter the pain tear down the walls and it's a repeat of it. I won't be lost, I won't be found, I'll scream till my voice is gone, it's like, I'll carry on. Oh, okay, I get it. Let's do it. Let's talk about this track more in the conclusion. Because welcome to the conclusion of my review of this track from an act named Later Than Eight, titled Flames. Now, what I think this track is about, as per the lyric section, I think it's about someone who is struggling with the things that are getting them down, the things that weigh them down. They're, suffer they're, they're really suffering from the thoughts in their head and maybe their regrets and other things. But they're also looking to come up from that and not let themselves be weighed down by it. They're going to find, get out of the flame. They're going to find the light. They're going to find a better future for themselves and they're going to get through it. And I feel like that is something that a lot of people can relate to. I personally can. I know what it's like to be up late at night, kind of feeling like everything's lost and nothing's going to improve and stuff. And then you do, you do want to find that ability, you know, that strength to better get yourself out of that. And so I think there'll be an audience for people who are interested in the story. The vocals are really interesting. They're done with a style that I think texturally and melodically sounds great. And I like the way that we kind of keep in our mid-range in those verses and how we stack the higher octaves in the choruses. I think they're cool. I don't necessarily know if I got what the song was about from the vocals. There is an innate perceived tension from the way it sounds, the digital synthetic textures of that voice kind of screaming and crying out. I can get the feel of it, but I don't know if I got all the words clearly. And so I'm just sort of just for transparency's sake, noting that that would be the only thing I would want to, to work on. If we could maybe have like a dry layer in here occasionally, just to have more of like a solid foundation as well as doing the other like cool stuff on top. And to be fair, it's not like the whole entire time I was unaware of what was going on with the lyrics. There were parts I could get through clearly, but it would have been nice to, I think, have gotten through the, the bulk of it clearly. And that's really the only thing I'd say, the feedback I'd have at this point is just to have a bit more clarity in the, in the vocal lines with a bit more kind of mix of the dry bit. Everything else was really neat. And I thought we showed awareness of how to stack those different vocal melodies and harmonies within the arrangement really neatly in a way that was showed good vocal technique. And I'm, I'm satisfied with it. I thought there was an authentic performance. And to be fair, it was an interesting way of approaching them. And I'm really happy we're trying something different. Like the track itself at three minutes 52 is well spaced out. There are seamless transitions between different instrumental parts as well as the verse and chorus sections and, and, and interlude bits there. We didn't necessarily, oh, did we have an interlude or was it? I think there was definitely a double chorus at the end. The, the track predominantly featured guitars, bass, drums, synth pads, like textures and like leads going from side to side and stuff, as well as again, the stacked vocal harmonies and other sort of foliage or sort of sub layer percussive elements. And I think that did really well at including the right amount of instruments within this track. We didn't have it all at once. And I think that that was smart. We played around with the dynamic range of it. The, the, there wasn't the same loudness all the time. There were different instruments that added different sorts of energies within the piece. And when they were there, such as with the distorted guitars, they had a huge amount of power behind them and they really kicked in the mix. But again, they were a sometimes thing. The synthy parts were a bit more low key and atmospheric and ambient. They surround you in the headphones and went from side to side occasionally and you were following along on what was going to happen next. And it, added, it made it a bit more sort of mysterious sounding. And it sort of gave me, it gave it kind of an industrial vibe in a way that also supported what the guitars were doing really well harmonically. The bass lines were representing and sort of filling in the root notes really, really well. The drums were great. I thought there were some interesting kicks, quarter and eighth note grooves on the kicks and snares with some 16th note like double kicks a bit later on, which I thought added a bit of sort of punch and power to it. And that was really satisfying. I think that there are there are a few different drum grooves and ideas there that made this track more interesting because there was that variation there. We weren't just relying on an idea for what the kick can do in one particular section. We, it seemed like the track was evolving as we went through it. And I was having a listen to other parts. There might've been some keys in like one point there, which were kind of subtle, but then the synths took over that role in another part. We arpeggiated the triads really neatly. And it, there, it was like, 
There was an interesting variety of different resonances with the lows, mids, and highs that wasn't a mixing or mastering issue. Rather, it was simply almost like we were niching certain bits and parts of the frequency spectrum to kind of make it more interesting. We were we, we were playing around with the intensities of flavors within this piece. And I feel like it's an extremely colorful track, not just because of the variety of different instruments and types of sort of um, sounds we had, but also because even if we repeated certain amounts of things aside from the hook line which i'll get into in a moment well we repeated it but i would have liked a bit more variation than that last part just the bits outside of that you would they were never predictable and i appreciate that i think we could have potentially had a like an alternate lead layer or gone like double time or half time with the drums in that that last chorus section and forgive me if that's something that was already happening but i think that would have been really neat because what it would have let the listener know was, hey, this is the end of the song, we're going somewhere, something new is happening. I just think that could have been really cool. It's not a complaint, like it doesn't make the track less um, successful. It's just that to have that variety at the end, when you've already had so much change and diversity th throughout, otherwise, I just think that could have been something we could have done. But but uh, outside of that, there might have been something more subtle that I missed. I'd, I'd, I'd want to have another listen through this track in my own time to feel like I fully got it because of the fact there are all these little sort of little sort of bits of fun sort of zazzy stuff going on that I feel like I might have missed. But on a first listen basis, that's my sort of feedback on it. The theme overall meant, made me feel as if we were definitely going through a sense of like, like there was a sense of trepidation from the way that the synths ticked over. The, the guitar is bass, the drums are sort of edgy sounding, there's a bit of grittiness to the tones of those. And like the, the, the minor key clearly was indicating a sense of being not being particularly happy about it. We never really got much of a major resolution in it either, so I didn't necessarily feel like we we're getting out of it anytime soon. But the lyrics were telling us as if we were going to push forward in that. And to be fair, it's not like things instantly get better the moment you start trying. You have to kind of keep at it and things improve, you know, so it kind of makes sense thematically. But I think the brightness of some of those high textures kind of symbolizes the light that we're trying to reach towards. So I think in, that it was a smart song. It's well written. I'm happy with the vast majority of it. I think it was a tight instrumental performance and I, I understand how the lyrics and, and vocals went along with it and I don't think there's a note out of place. I should note that before I get into the studio recording, mixing and mastering, that the, the kind of almost focus on the sound of the vocals rather than having a specific soul like storytelling role helps it niche together with other parts of the mix or the arrangement so i, I get that if that's something we were also trying to consider the, the studio recording mixing mastering was pretty tight though again i liked the way things were balanced within the free spectrum there were some resonances but they are in different parts and they kind of made it a bit more exciting things move between the sides of the stereo field like backwards and forwards and everything like that and like there was automation of that. I think the vocals, and, you know, despite wanting more kind of clarity with the pronunciation of certain words, I still think they were quite well presented within the mix and they definitely sat in the ether really nicely and they were niched. Um, there was dynamic range to this, it wasn't. And it was nice and loud without pumping so the bus compression and limiting was handled. I mean, effectively, this is my review of this track from an act named Later Than Eight titled The Flames and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go show us some love via the various social medias and the YouTube page and stay cool and stay safe and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as you need the help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world and I'll catch you in the next review. Spider hands out. <laughs>